Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's Threat Snapshot. So we're going to cover two topics today. First up is Manage Engine. If you're a Manage Engine customer, hopefully you saw this in the news about two weeks ago, as a lot of their products were affected by a remote code execution vulnerability. And to make matters worse, this is a pre-authentication. So you don't even need valid credentials to uh, trigger that exploit. So this is one of those where it's very easy and trivial for an attacker to use, high severity, um, particularly because a lot of times when you exploit, it's going to be running under an elevated context, just as the tool is running in. So this is a pretty severe vulnerability. Um, as with all vulnerabilities, uh, recommended action is to patch immediately. Manage Engine has released uh, fixes for all of the affected products. So you can see those here. And, and yes, that's quite a few affected products. Um, without diving too much into details, the root cause of this was an outdated third-party dependency, um, Apache Centario, and that's really used to help Prosex um, XML, which is being used in the um, single sign-on SAML format. So when that um, single sign-on exchange is going on, um, there's some XML uh, documents that are being exchanged, and that's where this um, vulnerability lies. If you um, throw some, you know, malformed, um, you know, malicious XML at the single sign-on endpoint, uh, it can trigger this remote code execution vulnerability. So this is definitely something to be aware of if you're a managed engine customer. Um, CISA has been tracking this. They added this to their known exploited vulnerability catalog last week. Um, so it is being seen in the wild. Um, there are proof of concepts available. Um, here, this one is uh, dead simple to use. This is put out by Horizon 3. So you can see all of the different ones that are affected and then some of the um, you know ones where there are some other circumstances around it. Uh, really good research by them as well as the original authors if you want to read more about the underlying vulnerability itself. But let's actually just pivot over to Snap Attack, uh, take a look at what this looks like. So we installed one of the Manage Engine products. Um, this is Service Desk Plus um, here in an environment. And we have this running here on a Windows machine, so you can see this up and running. Uh, I'm going to hit play on the video, and we're going to pivot over to our Kali Linux attacker, which is going to run um, that POC here. So again, pretty trivial. Um, we have that Python exploit. Um, we're going to give it the URL for where Manage Engine is uh, running. So this is that um, SAML response servlet and just the command that we want to run. So we're going to pop calc, um, not doing anything fancy, anything uber elite here. Um, can pivot back over to the Windows host. So we don't see calc popped here, but it actually is running on the system. Again, this is running under the context in Manage Engine, not the user that I'm capturing the desktop from. And we do see we have some detections here. So let's um, talk through some detection strategies. So uh, like a lot of times when you have a, and again, I would consider this a web exploit here. Um, if you're exploiting something running on IIS or Apache Tomcat, in this case, this is a Java uh, server and Java process, it's going to have those um, child commands spawning from that parent. So. Um, instead of w3wp.exe or IIS um, spawning, you know, calc or some malicious uh, program here, we're going to see that spawning from Java. So um, this is the manage engine service desk. Um, we can see that image here that that's that Java process. And then we can see calc and our win32 calc.exe popping up underneath it. So again, that parent child relationship is really a strong way to hunt for this sort of behavior. Again, that also works against really a lot of the class of vulnerabilities here. So like I said, it can be any sort of web server, whether that's, you know, Tomcat, PHP, Apache, Nginx, um, this sort of methodology of seeing that remote execution, seeing these random and weird child processes spawning uh, makes a really good hunt query. And also a lot of times can be used for higher quality detections and alerts, depending on how rare some of these child processes are. So that's definitely one detection strategy. We actually wanted to look at some of these here. So uh, we don't often talk about detecting these at the network level. Um, this is one of those where, again, if you're able to see the traffic here, um, we can see that that um, SAML response servlet uh, is throwing an internal server error in HTTP 500. And that's because it has that uh, malicious post body here. So. Uh, this could be one way that you could detect this if you have that visibility into uh, network level uh, detections. 
Um, I will also say that that 500 error is going to be logged on manage in, on um, the manage engines um, in their like uh, application logs. So if you were on the endpoint and you wanted to triage those, maybe forward those off to your sim, you could certainly review those for a um, crash dump. You would see the full stack trace with that 500 error and um, affecting that um, servlet. So that could be another way that you could detect this if you were looking through the file. Um, Again, like we talked about on the process graph, looking for um, you know Java, particularly if um, it's belonging to Manage Engine as you know one of the folders. Um, this would be a good way to look specifically for uh, Manage Engine applications and and using this in a more generic way um, to see if any of their uh, processes are being exploited here. So this is a good detection for this. Um, obviously, if you wanted to make this a little bit more robust, you could um, target any sort of application. It doesn't have to be Manage Engine, but um, this will at least help if you wanted to um, you know, do a retroactive hunt and see, you know, before this patch was applied, do I see any evidence of this sort of behavior in my network? Um, this should at least help scope you to some of the Manage Engine project products. So. This is a good detection that you can use both for um, you know, deploying a detection if you wanted to learn on this type of behavior, as well as hunting. So that's Manage Engine. Um, next thing I want to pivot over to is a blog post by TrustedSec, and this is about LAPS. Um, sure, a lot of you have um, heard of that, have used this. This is the Microsoft Local Administrator Password Solution. So uh, raise your hand if you've been on a red team before. And again, this maybe was a little bit more in the olden days. I'm, I'm dating myself, but um, you popped a machine and you were able to get that local administrator password. And it was the same password for every image in the network because they had a gold image that they used and it was a hard-coded password. Uh, so that's obviously a big security no-no. If I get that one local administrator password, I can then move laterally across all the machines in the network. Um, bad practice, I don't see that often nowadays. And again, a lot of that is because you have solutions like LAPS, which are going to help that around. Um, so originally when I saw this, I was afraid, oh no, is LAPS broken? Is the sky falling? And that isn't really the case here. Um, they do a really good deep dive. And, and clearly this was probably spawned from one of their red team assessments where um, LAPS was a little bit misconfigured and users who had access to view those administrator passwords um, could do so in a way either for additional lateral movement, uh, could be malicious insider, insider threat, where um, let's say, you know, this is a help desk user and they're only supposed to um, be able to look at certain user workstations, but because LAPS is configured on servers, they can also pivot to, you know, other servers, think like an exchange server or file server that they might not, um, shouldn't have access to. So you could look at that from an insider threat vector. Um, you could also look at it from a compromised account. Um, I think we've seen in you know recent breaches, uh, the Uber one comes to mind where there was a you know privileged user on the inside who had access to a lot of systems, and you know landing on that account gave them a lot more access. So if you happen to compromise an administrator who had access to LAPS credentials, you could use that to you know move laterally quite a bit in the network. So. This is a very good blog post. They deep dive a lot of the Windows internals, how to interpret the logs, translate GUIDs, um, which again can be very confusing if you're looking at some of these Windows events for the first time. So definitely um, worth the read. We're gonna kind of do a quick summary here and show you this in Snap Attack. Um, the one thing that I do wanna call out is that, um, again, this can't be used by anybody, so a regular user isn't going to work. And this is actually from um, a setup guide for installing LAPS that they recommended. And the way that they were doing this is they had a demo environment and they had a security group called IT Admins. And this is the group that they assigned the ability to read those um, LAPS, the local administrator passwords. So if you have that delegated authority, then you are able to obviously view those passwords. So uh, it kind of makes sense. Um, if you give the user an ability to read a password, they should be able to read the password. So that's not so much the vulnerability here, but if um, that user account becomes compromised or again, malicious insider, um, they might have access to a lot more things than they should. So that's really where you want to kind of think about in the context of this attack. So pivoting over to snap attack, we can take a look at this threat. Um, we do have the POC here, um, this lapse dumper, which you can use. Um, you can also use crack map exec. 
A um, couple of things from the blog post I do want to call out. Um, you do have to configure some additional auditing here. So um, Windows Event 4662 is what you're going to want to log. Um, you can also um, audit the specific field. So this is that um, MSMCS uh, administrator password and then PWD. Um, so that's again going to trigger who is reading that um, Active Directory attribute um, in, in the server to see what that lapse password is because that's uh, actually where the password is being stored is an Active Directory for each machine. So we've got a Windows machine here running laps. Uh, we've got Windows, or I'm sorry, we've got a Linux uh, attacker here. We've got that uh, laps dumper here running. And again, we'll just show you that command here. So. Um, we have that snap attack user that is a delegated user that has the ability to read those lapse passwords. Um, we're going to point it at uh, the domain and the server. And we're going to see really quickly here that we can spill out all of the lapse passwords in the domain. So this is really small. We only have two here. Um, you can see those, again, randomized passwords per machine. So that's, again, the beauty of lapse is that um, every machine has a different password. And then those also can get rotated, say, every 30 days. Um, but this also is now giving that user keys to a lot of the castle and they can move laterally or they can do other things. Um, good news is that there are definitely uh, ways that we can detect this. Um, and again, a lot of this is going to come down to that Windows event that we talked about, that 4662. So uh, I'll save you a little bit of time, um, just kind of jumping ahead to the detection. Um, if you want to see kind of how this detection is created, definitely recommend reading that Trusted Sec article. Um, there are access masks that you can use to see how this, um, uh, how that attribute is being accessed, and as well as that object type. So, you know why this GUID, but this is actually what's going to resolve to that um, admin password, and then we can see that it's the user snap attack here that is um, actually requesting that, and we can see you know multiple instances of that being run here. So. Again, this would be a good opportunity if you wanted to do some, you know, threat hunting, you know, take a look and see if there's any, you know, possible insider threats or activities in your network. Um, you could also deploy this with some sort of counter trigger that says, hey, anytime somebody accesses more than, you know, five or 10 of these in a day, um, let's fire an alert and let's see if that's something worth responding to. Again, that's going to have to be kind of tuned in size to your environment, but um, that's definitely a good opportunity here to look for this sort of threat and behavior. So anyways, that's our threat snapshot for the week. Feel free to comment below in the video, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.